Okay, several different art teachers have asked me about this, um, how I handle cleanup time. This is my painting center, and this is how it looks at the end of the day, and this is how it looks at the beginning of the day. So how do I manage to do that? Well, let's see. Paint instructions. One, spread newsprint out over work area, and I have the newsprint available. The kids just get it on their own. Mix a small amount of paint, only what you need, Painting is for this project only, so I don't allow kids to get extra paint just to be silly and paint their hands, their arms, paint smiley faces on the newsprint, yada yada. It's just for the project at hand. Um, do not put paint directly on the tray. Use palette paper instead. Clean up all message with the, messes with a sponge and the brushes in the dirty brush bucket at the end of class. So let me just explain. When we're using acrylic paint, we use these trays. So I, we pull out a sheet of palette paper, put it on the tray, so that at the end of the period we can just throw out the palette paper and the tray is still clean. Makes cleanup much more effective. Um, the brushes, the kids know they've got to be bristles pointing up. These are the clean brushes. Um, there's acrylic here, there's tempera, there's tempera cakes, there's watercolor. Um, these are the mixing palettes that we use more mixing colors. And this is the infamous dirty brush bucket. So most teachers find that when you've got a tiny little sink like this, um, you, each kid washing their palettes, each kid washing their brushes, it's not going to work. You'd have a line out the door, the bell would ring, nobody would have enough time to actually do any art. So what we do instead is at the end of the period when we're cleaning up, we drop the dirty brushes in the dirty brush bucket, bristles pointing down. We take the can of water and we dump it. Um, if the, the newsprint is over there, um, if, we, uh, if the newsprint is relatively clean, we return it to over there. If it's really soaked and gross, they crumple it up and throw it in the garbage. And the mixing trays, one of my major rules is do not stack the mixing trays at the end of the period. If you allow students to wash mixing trays, I don't know about your students, but this is what my students do when they're washing a mixing tray. They get it all over the counter. Okay? So the rule is this table, which is right near the sink, is empty. Okay? They put the mixing trays here, and they're not allowed to stack them. Because if you stack them, the bottoms get dirty. So they just spread them out here with the paint on them. And at the end of the period, all the kids leave. All these tables are nice, clear, and clean. And what I have here is a bucket with some brushes, bristles pointing down, and I have some mixing trays. Well, guess what? It takes me two seconds to wash a mixing tray, okay? Or a student helper. If I want to use a student helper, I could do that too. But it takes me two seconds to wash a mixing tray and it takes me just a couple of minutes to grab all the brushes, put a little soapy water in one of these cans, put them in there, scrub them around and rinse them all in there clean. You don't have ruined brushes. Um, I'm putting them in there all uh, bristles pointing up. They've lasted me for years. And I find that generally I have to replace very few brushes throughout the day, uh, throughout the school year. It's, it's very unusual for me to have to replace brushes. Um, and literally, it just takes me a few minutes to clean up. The, the problem isn't that I don't want to teach the students how to clean. I understand that they need to learn how to clean. The problem is there's 30 of them. So you have that many kids, you really can't have them getting in a long line to wash the brushes. You could assign a helper, and occasionally you have a kid who wants to help out. But the reality is, right after art, they have to go to lunch. And it it's, literally takes me five minutes to get all the mixing trays rinsed out and all the brushes clean. And that's, if I let the kids do it, it would be 30 minutes to get each kid up here to wash each brush. And this entire floor would be flooded and worse yet, the counter would be flooded. The problem with the counter being flooded is it can leak under here and cause mold down here. And I just don't want to go there. I'd rather do it myself. Um, so that's how I handle uh, clean up. And you, the kids actually did paint today. And yet, looking at this, you wouldn't know it. It's perfectly clean and neat. And this is how the kids left it. Um, and every once in a while, I have a student who says, can I help you with anything? Can I wash brushes? And I will go over and I'll show the kids how to do the soapy water and wash all the brushes at once. Or I'll show a student, okay, 
Hold the mixing tray low down in the sink, angle it away from you, hold it right under the running water, use one of the sponges to clean it. But mainly I make the students responsible for the table cleanup, um, getting a sponge and wiping up any spills, etc. cetera. Um, and that's what they're responsible for. And I make my responsibility, the mixing trays and the brushes. Um, uh, the last thing I wanna add is when we're using tempera paint, I take the tempera and put it on this table. When we are using acrylic, I pull the acrylic out and put it on this table. When we're using the tempera cakes, I take the tempera cakes and put it on this table. When we're using the watercolor, I put those out on the table. With my more advanced classes where the kids actually know the differences between the different types of paint, I just leave it all here and let them help themselves and remind them to read the labels. But having the acrylic paint using the palette pad and mixing trays and, and uh, styrofoam trays as opposed to having them just put it directly on the tray and having to wash it, it saves a tremendous amount of um, time. And also, if I want to preserve a color, you just put a second palette paper on top and you throw the whole thing in a plastic bag. Um, so that's a way to save paint from class to class. Uh, the temper paint and the watercolor paint tend to rinse off easily. So it's not that big a deal for me to wash them and I never have to wash acrylic except off the brushes. Um, if occasionally I do accidentally forget dirty brushes in the dirty brush bucket, all you have to do is soak them in a little bit of this stuff, which is essentially alcohol. Um, you could use uh, actually hand sanitizer. It would work just as well. Um, Purell hand sanitizer or any sort of rubbing alcohol works absolutely perfectly. It just dissolves the acrylic paint right off of the brushes and it also by the way dissolves it off of clothes as far as staining clothes i don't deal with it i teach middle school fifth or eighth grade if they want to bring in an old t-shirt or something and put it on over their clothing to protect their clothing that's a hundred percent up to them but i tell them push your sleeves up higher than your elbows and if you get a stain on your clothing you can use soap sponge water whatever paper towel to try and get it off, but I don't want to hear about it. You know, you be careful. Don't get stuff in your clothing or bring a smock. I think at this age, it's really their responsibility. And I've never gotten a phone call from any mother telling me I ruined their um, precious child's clothing. So it seems to work for me. Um, so that's my, this is my painting center. This stuff remains out at all times. And uh, I try and paint all the time with my students because I feel that it's uh something they don't most students don't get to do at home thank you